Good evening, good evening, Titan Nation. How's everybody doing tonight? And welcome to another uh, off-season edition of Titans and Truth. I am your host, Chris, a.k.a. Blue Enforcer. And we got another great episode for you uh, today. And uh, what we're going to do tonight is... <clears throat> excuse me. Now, what we're doing tonight is this is a series that I am doing. So, you know, if you remember from the last episode, I am uh, working on what would I would do... If I were hired as the general manager of the Tennessee Titans instead of John Robinson. And so this was a challenge that was laid out by my friend uh, Cody. uh, Cody uh, Milhoin of Titan Town. He actually put out this challenge to me and said, uh, what would you do if you were the general manager of the Tennessee Titans? And so I gladly accepted the challenge and I've already begun giving some ideas of what I would do as the general manager of the Tennessee Titans. If you want to take a look at what I would have did for 2016 when he was when I was first hired as the general manager, you could definitely go back uh, to the last episode, the OTA review of, of Titans and Truth. And right here, I'm going to show you uh, the moves that I would have made just to give you a quick reminder of what I was talking about in 2016. I would have uh, traded, still traded for DeMarco Murray. I would have kept... Uh, Sign Rashard Matthews, Byron Bell, Rashard Johnson, and uh, Craig Stevens. I would have also signed Alex Mack and Mitchell Schwartz uh, on the offensive line. I would have signed Damon uh, Snacks Harrison on the defensive line. And I would have also gotten a backup quarterback in Nick Foles. And I would have definitely went ahead and signed Josh Norman and Tashawn Gibson on uh, the defensive secondary. And as far as the draft is concerned, yes, I would have still made the trade uh, to trade up, uh, trade back to 15, but I would have not traded back up into the top 10. I would have just picked Taylor Decker at 15. I would have played him at guard until something happened where he can move to tackle. And instead of Kevin Dodd, I would not have picked him uh, there at 33, I would have picked another player like a Noah Spence at defensive end. Also, I would still pick Derrick Henry, but maybe at the earlier pick at number uh, 43. And then at number 45, I would have uh, went with Mackenzie Alexander, a uh, cornerback from Clemson. And so that's the main moves I would have made uh, in the draft. And so, again, this is what my depth chart uh, would have looked like for 2016, as you can see. Uh, I would have had on the offensive line, Taylor Wan at left tackle, Byron Bell at left guard, Alex Mack at center. Um, Taylor Decker will be battling with uh, Chance Warmack for right guard, and Mitchell Swartz at right tackle. Of course, Delaney Walker will be at tight end, uh, Marcus Mario at quarterback, DeMarco Murray at running back, uh, Tajay Sharp and Rashard Matthews will be my starting wide receivers. And Harry Douglas, reluctantly, will be my third receiver. On the defensive side of the ball, I would have had a very strong defensive line with uh, Jarrell Casey at one defensive end position, Snacks Harrison at the nose, and Daquan Jones at the other defensive end position. And that could be inter-switch with Harrison and Jones because both of them could play uh, the nose, so I would definitely switch them out at times too. A rat pole and Derek Morgan will be my outside linebackers with Avery Williamson and Wesley Woodyard in the middle. And uh, at corners, I would have had Josh Norman and Jason McCourty, and at safety, I would have had Kevin Byard and Tashawn Gibson uh, as my starting. So that would have been my starting eleven as far as starting the season uh, in 2016. Now. Going into 2017, and going into 2017, of course, we would have just finished 9-7, and unfortunately missing the playoff by one game, uh, losing out to the Jaguars in a very tough uh, blowout situation where Marcus ended up getting injured, broke his leg, and we ended up having to finish the last game uh, with Nick Foles as quarterback. And we ended up going 9-7. and And the secondary needed fixing because they got burnt a lot. Special teams definitely needed some help because uh, special teams coach Bobby April was fired four games into the season. 
And so a lot of things needed to be done uh, to fix this team to where they could be competing for the playoffs. So going into free agency, what I would have done is first and foremost, I would have signed A.J. Bouye away from the Jaguars. I would have went very hard for A.J. Bouye. I would have gave him whatever he wanted uh, to be my number one corner. And I would have also brought along Calais Campbell as well. So Calais Campbell would beef up the defensive line a bit. I just was, I'm just not that big on Daquan Jones at the time. So I could have seen myself with Calais Campbell with Snacks Harrison and Jarrell Casey along the defensive line. I think that's a stronger defensive line. You know, Daquan Jones could be some good depth behind them. Uh, also, you know, Dante Hightower was in Nashville uh, during the uh, the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, taking in the city and things like that. I would have set up where I would have had a club suite at Bridgestone Arena and I would have sat down and talked to Dante Hightower and would have convinced him to join the Titans. I would have did whatever he, I would have did whatever I had to do to get him out of New England because you know, Bella cheat or Belichick will do whatever it takes to make some of his players stay. And even when they're about to leave and they test the market, he sings some kind of a swan song uh, to get them to come back. He did the same thing with Devin McCourty because Devin McCourty was nearly going to sign with the Tennessee Titans himself to join his twin brother, Jason. And Belichick just basically sung a swan song, begging him not to leave, saying, please don't go, please don't go, come back, stay with us, stay with us. And Devin McCourty ended up resigning. Of course, Dante Hightower ended up doing the same thing. Maybe a little bit more money than we would have wanted to give him, but I would have did whatever I could to get Dante Hightower, and he would be in the middle of my defense right then and there. Also, what I would have done... And I want y'all to comment on this. And by the way, make sure you share the show, share, comment, and make sure you also subscribe as well. Subscribe to the show. And so I want y'all to answer uh, this question for me in the comment section below. Who would you have signed at wide receiver if it was you? Alshon Jeffrey or Jeremy Macklin? And me personally, at the time, I would have signed Jeremy Macklin. And this is why. Alshon Jeffrey had a very big history of injury problems and, you know, maybe effort issues as well, you know, at times. And, you know, there was a time where he was malcontent uh, with Jay Cutler at quarterback. And so we didn't know what we were going to get. You know, Alshon Jeffrey did pretty well in a contract year, but that's a contract year. Everybody tends to do their best in a contract year. But would he have given more effort with a new deal? Or with a proven deal to see where he's where we would go with that. So that's why I think I would go with Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin a little bit more of a hard worker. He's a little bit more of a uh, he was a little bit more of a speedster who could take a little bit of the top off. And he's a guy that you know you can depend on. So that's why I think I would assign Jeremy Macklin uh, to be on the other side of the uh, of the offense aside from Rashard Matthews. And also, I would have still signed Brendan Trawick and uh, Darren Bates uh, for special teams help. And maybe just another wide receiver instead of Eric Weems uh, to help in uh, special teams coverage. And maybe can contribute a little bit as a wide receiver as well. And also, one thing I would not have done, I would not under any circumstances have signed Jonathan Cyprian. There is no way I would have signed Jonathan Cyprian. Would not have happened, no way, no how. And there's a good reason why a little bit later. I know I, ju I just signed uh, to Sean Gibson last year, uh, and he had a pretty, he had an okay year last year, uh, you know, for the Titans, but wasn't really great. We still could use an upgrade at that position to go along with Kevin Byard, who emerged going towards the end of the season. So that's what I would have did free agency wise as far as some of those picks. And clearly there will be some things I would have had to address uh, as well um, in the draft. So going into the draft, this is what I would have done with the two picks that I would have had. First and foremost, at number five, since I just signed Jeremy Macklin, I wouldn't have a need of a receiver. So 
as much as I was in love with Mike Williams and kind of liked Corey Davis, I would not have chosen any, either one of them. Uh, mainly because Corey Davis, he was also coming off of injury and we just signed Jeremy Macklin. Mike, Mike Williams was hurt as well. So I wouldn't have chosen either one of them. I, I, at number five, sitting there, waiting for you to pick him at, at strong safety is Jamal Adams, a natural born leader. A natural leader has a knack for the football, not only can cover well, but he plays the run support extremely well. He's a guy that can become a leader of your defense, and he's a guy that will come in right away and start from day one. Absolutely, start from day one. And I would absolutely love this pick at number five. At number 18, I think I would have still stuck with the Dory Jackson. Uh, I would have stuck with the Dory Jackson. And here's why I would have picked him. Now, I know I already signed Josh Norman the year before and A.J. Bouye just in the offseason. But you still need help in the return game. And you have a guy that can play in the nickel as well with his height at 5'11". He can play in the nickel. And he's fast enough to keep up with some of the speedy receivers in the slot. And you can kind of interchange with him and Bouye. You can kind of play these guys anywhere. Now, Josh Norman is more of an outside boundary corner. He's not going to be a guy that plays in the nickel. But with Bouye and Jackson, you can kind of switch them out a little bit if you want and have some certain packages. And you can kind of keep them fresh so that when the fourth quarter comes and teams are trying to pass to get back in the game, you know, you don't have any tired corners out there. So I would have picked a Dory Jackson, would have had him in the slot uh, as a nickel corner, and he would also be my kick and punt returner as well. So you would have solved a lot of problems there, and hey, you can never have too many good corners. In this league, you need at least three uh, good corners uh, in this league with the uh, receivers that we have and with the offenses being more pass-centric. So that's why I would have picked a Dory Jackson at 18. Now, going into the third round, since we don't have a second round pick, I would have stayed at 83. I would have not have traded up. I would have picked Chris Godwin, um, wide receiver out of Penn State. Um, a very, very good fluid route runner uh, that was very productive at uh, Penn State for Coach James Franklin. And he would come in right away, maybe not needing to start right away or anything like that, but he would definitely be a good third or fourth receiver uh, with Tajay Sharp and also coming behind Jeremy Macklin and Rashard Matthews. So if anybody gets hurt, we have some backup with that. And also in the second round, now one trade I would have made, I would have not picked Jonu Smith, uh, unfortunately, at... Um, at the pick that we had at 124, I think I would have traded back. I would have traded back into the fourth round. I would have traded back in the fourth round, and I would have picked either defensive end Carl Lawson from Alabama, uh, from Auburn, excuse me, or I would have went ahead and got some linebacker depth with Jalen Reeves Maben uh, out of uh, UT, out of Tennessee. Uh, to be a backup uh, inside linebacker, maybe can help with the pass rush a little bit on the outside, backing up Morgan or Rackpo, or we could maybe convert him to safety if we need to, but we would have already had Kevin Byer and Jamal Adams back there with Tashawn Gibson as a third safety because we could play some three safety sets as well. So I would probably have Jalen Reese Maven as a inside linebacker backing up uh, Dante Hightower and Wesley Woodyard and maybe he's a guy that could eventually replace Wesley Woodyard as he's getting up in age. Or I would have went with Carl Lawson, maybe a guy that could be a tweener between a defensive end or an outside linebacker uh, as well. So maybe that would be somewhere I would go with that. But I think I would have went with Jalen Reeves Maven if I went back. So, and I would have stayed with Jayon Brown in the fifth round. Uh, that's probably one of the major picks I would have probably kept. And so, basically, that's what I would have done so far. Some of the other picks, of course, are irrelevant uh, at this point. But now, going into the 2017 season, what I would have done, uh, of course, the line would still be Taylor Lewan, Byron Bell, maybe even Quinn Spain competing with him, uh, Alex Mack, Taylor Decker, and Mitchell Schwartz across the uh, offensive line. 
along with Delaney Walker at tight end, Marcus Mariota. DeMarco Murray would still be my running back, even though I have Derrick Henry right there behind him. Uh, Jeremy Macklin would be starting on one side, Rashard Matthews on the other side, and also either Tajay Sharp or Chris Godwin would be my third receiver, and the other would be the fourth receiver. Uh, on the defensive line would be Jarrell Casey, Snacks Harrison, and Calais Campbell, uh, with Daquan Jones providing depth behind him. Also, uh, Arakpo, Morgan, uh, Dante Hightower, and Wesley Woodyard would be my linebackers, bringing Jayon Brown to go along with um, Dante Hightower on third downs uh, for passing situations. Norman, Josh Norman, and A.J. Bouye uh, at corner, along with Adore Jackson being my nickel corner, and at safety, Kevin Byard and Jamal Adams. Uh, on the defense. So I think I have a pretty solid offense and defense uh, that could be effective uh, going into the 2017 season. And so that's exactly what I would have done. And I don't think I would have signed Taylor Decker, uh, Eric Decker either, because I would have already had uh, Jeremy Macklin. And also I would have had Chris Godwin as well. And so that's some of the moves I would have made uh, going into the 2017 season, uh, season of expectation and season of growth. And the main question would have been, can Terry Robisky adapt? Because last year, I mean, the offense did pretty well, but uh, can can we keep this going? Can we uh, adapt and maybe add a few wrinkles in to keep this offense going? And so we would see about that, but I would have done a few games in, I would have fired Terry Robisky, uh before the season was over and would have said, look, coach, uh, you need to get a better offensive coordinator. I would, I would have promoted uh, Jason Michael to offensive coordinator instead of Terry Robisky. So I would have fired Robisky during the season. He can't be my offensive coordinator. That's what I would have done. So that would have been one move I definitely would have made. And I would not have brought in Frisman Jackson as my wide receivers coach. I would have brought in somebody with a little bit more experience at the NFL level and maybe a guy that has played wide receiver before. This is what I would have done. I would have asked Mike Malarkey. I would have asked, I'm sorry. That's right, I have Hugh Jackson as my head coach. I have Hugh Jackson as my head coach. So I would have had Chris Sanders as my wide receivers coach. He's a guy that's played the position. He knows the the city. He knows the team. He's you know well rounded with the team. He would be a big help. And also, as far as the secondary is concerned, just to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do, I would have brought back veterans Marcus Robertson and Blaine Bishop to be my secondary coaches. To be my secondary coach and assistant secondary coach. Blaine Bishop would be my secondary coach. Marcus Robinson would be my assistant. And the reason why I would go with some former players uh, as secondary coaches is because, again, they have played the positions. So they would know what to do and how to execute in those situations. So that's why I would have brought those guys in uh, as coaches to help out this team and to make sure these players continue to play better. But again, I think the roster is really strong. Hugh Jackson goes into his second year. He's still modernizing his offense. And a lot of things would have gotten better. And so I think he would have definitely did wonders uh, for this team going into the 2017 season. Uh, again, I definitely want uh, to give a shout out to uh, our sponsor of this show, Craft Gasman Creations, and my cousin, Crystal Cleveland. Definitely check out some of her material that she has done. I'm going to put some of her uh, work up on my page, uh, on my Instagram page, as well as my Twitter page as well. And uh, it'll be also on the Facebook page as well. And so... Um, Definitely check her out. And also, make sure y'all check out the website, www.titansandtruth.wixsite.com backslash Titans and Truth. Uh, check out the uh, content material. I'm adding some new material that's going to be on there. And also going to be adding some more pictures uh, from the se from last season. And also, uh, I'll be updating it with pictures for this season as well. And make sure you check out uh, the Facebook page, Titans and Truth fan page, which I think I'm going to be changing that name 
uh, which I'm still getting ideas. So make sure y'all put down some ideas. What would y'all want the fan page to be called? Would you like it to be called the Two Tone and uh, the Two Tone Enforcers? Uh, would you like something like uh, the uh, the Titan Battalion, the Titan Army, uh, something like that? So let me know what y'all think about that, or what, or how about this, the Two Tone Navy, uh, something like that. Uh, definitely, I'll look at some ideas like that. So definitely check out the Titans of Truth fans page. Also check out the Instagram page at Titans underscore in underscore truth. Also check out Twitter at TNT Blue Enforcer. And of course, again, check out the website. So I'm about to get out of here, everybody. Thank y'all very much uh, for tuning in uh, to part two of my general manager challenge. And so again, I'll be coming back next week with part three of the general manager challenge what would i have done getting ready for this season getting ready for the 2018 season as we have just concluded last season so that'll be my final part uh going forward uh with the show and i look forward to doing that and i hope y'all look forward to joining me too so guys this has been chris uh, of titans and truth i'm out y'all have a very good uh rest of your evening and make sure, again, you enjoy, subscribe, share, comment. I want uh, I want 300 subscribers by the beginning of training camp. So make it happen, everybody. I'll holler at y'all. Y'all have a good one.